Hi guys. <laughs> we'll see if people come on in a second. Sorry to drop in here unexpected. Hi. People are coming on. Hello. Hi, Claude. Ciao. Um, sorry, I'm giving you guys the no makeup look, but I'm in the middle of cleaning over here and doing some stuff at the house. Um, having some tea. Oh, I love you too. Thank you so much. Um, I'll wait for a few more people to get on. Guys, Ghost Whisperer is 15 years old. <laughs> I am old. We are all collectively very old. Um, but that's okay. It's a good thing. It means we've lived some life, right? Um, oh, lots of hearts. Lots of hearts to you guys too. Thank you so much. I really should have fixed up for this situation. I apologize. It's, it's the vibe. It's the mood today. Sorry. Um, hello, Maryland. Aw, Hanky. Hi. Yes, I can come and clean your house. <laughs> I'm kind of professional. I could totally clean your house. Um, all right, guys. So I wanted to tell you, first of all, I wanted to celebrate with any Ghost Whisperer fans today and say thank you. Ghost Whisperer would have never happened, would have not stayed on as long as it did. Melinda Gordon and her ghost would have not had such a loving place to land if it weren't for all of you guys. Um, thank you so much uh, for supporting me, for supporting the show, um, for allowing us to tell you so many crazy, beautiful, emotional, and fun stories along the way. Um, and um, yeah, just thank you. Um, funny, uh, funny anecdotes about Ghost Whisperer. Well, Ghost Whisperer helped me out a lot in my new job at 911 because um, when I'm at 911 and I'm doing the calls, it's like basically kind of talking to myself, right, for a while. And um, Ghost Whisperer taught me that because I used to, we, we would shoot the scenes and we would do them with the people, obviously, and then we would have to remove them, if you guys remember, for like the big wide shots and stuff, um, so that it would look like I was talking to no one <laughs> for normal people. So for years, I would just stand on set and like do the scene with people and then um, talk to myself. And secretly talking to myself is one of the things I probably do most in my life. I really, I really love just talking to me. Um, and now you guys. So uh, yeah, that's I did a lot of talking to myself on Ghost Whisperer. Um, it's so crazy to me how many of you reach out and say that you're like rewatching it and all of that stuff, which is so nice. Um, and it's really interesting um, when my when my mom passed and when my grandmother passed. Um, I really found. Oh, we're back. Sorry, it said pause due to uh, um, poor connection. Anyway, when I lost um, people who were close to me in my life, I really found a lot of comfort in going back and watching Ghost Whisperer episodes and imagining them having their own Melinda Gordon somewhere to help them, you know, into the light and onto their next journey. So it's, I hope that doesn't sound weird or cheesy, but um, but I do really feel like that show um, was so helpful in that way and, and has brought people a lot of comfort um, in losing loved ones that I've known along the way, um, throughout the years. So that's really, that's really nice. Um, okay. So I promised you guys, I would tell you how I got Ghost Whisperer. And the story is, it's, it's really only for Ghost Whisperer fans, because if you're a Ghost Whisperer fan, then you are interested in the paranormal and all of that crazy stuff. Um, so it was right around my birthday. Um, and I was sent two scripts. I was getting ready to decide what show I wanted to do next and was kind of looking for things. Um, uh, somebody just said that wasn't a poor connection. It was spirits trying to get in. You know what? It was right after I mentioned my mom and my grandmother passing. So <laughs> we're going to go with that on this one. That is actually quite weird. Um, anyway, so it was right around my birthday. I was trying to decide what I wanted to do next. And I was sent two scripts and one um, just said the untitled John Gray project on it. And the other one was how I met your mother and, um, which I, and I loved both scripts, by the way, PS i like, I would have felt so lucky to be on either, but ghost whisperer obviously was where I was meant to land. Um, so the scripts arrived at my mom's house and, um, we were going out that night for a fun, like pre birthday, you know, kind of dinner thing. And I wanted to go to the magic castle. So we went to the magic castle with a few friends and we got a private seance 
out of nowhere, had never done it before. I thought it would be really fun and interesting. Um, and so we went to do the seance. And at the very beginning of the seance, the guy said, well, the ghosts are going to want to speak to someone tonight, the ghosts here at the castle. But we won't find out who until the end. And he was like, I'll come back to that later. And so we were like, oh, ghosts in the castle. Okay, this is fun. Now, again, I had not read The Ghost Whisperer Pilot yet, okay? It was just sitting at my mom's house. So we go through the whole evening. We're doing the seance. It's really fun. Um, everybody's having a great time. And he circles back to it at the end. And he's like, um, remember how I said that the ghost would want to speak to someone? He was like, can everybody open up their left hand? And so we did. We all opened our left hands. And in the middle of my left hand was this like X. And he looked right at me and he was like, okay. He goes, well, apparently the ghosts want to speak to you. And we all kind of like laughed it off and thought it was like part of his thing and it was funny and whatever. So we finished the evening. The ghosts like at the Magic Castle or whatever said some funny messages and one of them was about my birthday coming up and whatever. And I paid no attention to it. Went home that night and couldn't sleep because the night was like really fun and I just couldn't sleep anyway. So I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go through these two scripts. So the first script that I read was how I met your mother. And I thought it was great and amazing. And I was like, God, that would be so fun to be a part of. Um, and then I picked up the untitled John Gray project and it was Melinda Gordon and her ghost. And it was the pilot of ghost whisperer. And I was like, wait a minute. The guy at the seance said, <laughs> I'm who the ghosts want to speak to. There happens to be a ghost show sitting in my mother's house. I can't sleep and I'm reading it. And I was like, I just really feel like this is, this is what I'm, this is what I'm supposed to do. And um, we had worked with, you know, a few different mediums like on the show. Um, and so later on, after I took Ghost Whisper, I knew the second I read it that I, I needed to be Melinda Gordon and there was no doubts for me. And um, we signed the deal very quickly and I was immediately Melinda Gordon. Um, but later, like in that first season, I remember one of the mediums had said that um, they were told by spirits that I was who they wanted to talk to. And so it was like those three things, like the magic castle, the script being there that night, and then one of the mediums on our show sort of saying that always made me really feel like, even if you don't, um, even if you don't believe, you know, in that stuff, it felt kismet to me. It felt like that is the ghosts are really messing with us on this live. <laughs> this has never happened on a live, by the way. This is the kind of stuff that used to happen on the set. So this is good. It's very ghost whispery. I'm into it. Um, I'll just keep going. Anyway, but I always felt like for all the years that we did ghost whisper, because of those three things, I always felt chosen somehow to be there. It always felt like more than a job to me. Um, it felt like a responsibility to um, connect you guys into a deeper um, beautiful belief in that maybe our loved ones don't leave us. They just go into a different place and they watch over us that way. And that, um, you know, even the ones who have um, trauma when they leave um, are hopefully met by somebody who helps them go on and find a, a more beautiful way. Um, and I've really thought about Ghost Whisper a lot in the world that we're in today, um, where so many people are unfortunately, you know, passing from this horrible virus and all of that. Um, and loved ones are not getting to say their proper goodbyes or see them before they go. Um, and it's really without getting like too emotional, it's really touched my heart to think that hopefully there is, you know, a Melinda Gordon out there somewhere helping them um, and making this, this journey and these goodbyes that are being taken from people uh, a little bit easier. So um, anyway, yeah, I just wanted to share that story with you because I realized that like in all the years that I did press for Ghost Whisperer, I never, I never got to tell that story. Um, and so I just want you guys to know that um, I took it really seriously and it will always be hands down um, my favorite, my favorite thing that I ever got to be a part of, even though I love, of course, being on 911 and I've loved all the other things that I've been in. Um, Ghost Whisperer was in my heart. Um, and I think you guys know that um, and hopefully felt that. And I told all of those stories from a place of really wanting to, um, really wanting to help anybody who was, you know, dealing with loss. And it was amazing when we were doing the show, how many of our guest stars would come on to the show and had just lost someone like 
within months or, or a year of, you know, being on there and wanted to come on the show to not only be a part of a, you know, a, a watch show, but also really, um, be able to let go. And so there were so many times that like we would be crossing somebody over into the light and the real actor on set would be sort of using it as their opportunity to say goodbye to a loved one that they had lost in real life. And it was really, it was beautiful. Um, it was really, really beautiful. And the crossing over scenes, by the way, were the craziest things ever. Like I thought that I cried a lot. I thought I cried a lot on 911 because <laughs> I'm always crying. Maddie's always crying about something, but, um, but I just remember on Ghost Whisper, like those crossing over scenes sometimes would take us like 10 hours to film um, because we'd have to do, you know, every angle and with the ghost and without the ghost and the light and the blah, blah, blah. And they were always like at night. I was like, can I ever cross anyone over like in the middle, like mid morning before lunch? Like, why does it always have to be at midnight on the back lot? But um, but yeah, those things went on forever. And I, I just used to be like, I literally it would always amaze me because I'd be like, there's no way I could come back here tomorrow and cry again for another eight hours. And there we went. So apparently I have a lot of tears in me and just a lot of water, apparently. Um, okay. I'm going to stop talking now and telling you guys what goes to for stories. And if you have any questions, somebody just said, I look lovely. Thank you so much. You need glasses. I am, I have no makeup on and I'm scary. Oh, marry you. I'm already married. But if I wasn't, um, Anyway, if you guys have any Ghost Whisper questions for me, I'm going to have to pop off in a few minutes, but um, but let me know if you have any, any things you want to know. Uh, did they film Ghost Whisper on Warner Brothers' lot? Um, everyone, so after we, uh, uh, Ghost Whisper was at the Universal lot, um, mostly, but then there was that giant fire, and that's another crazy Ghost Whisper story. So I, at the time, lived down the street um, and woke up one morning and saw smoke, like, in my bedroom window. Um, and I was like, that looks like it's at Universal. And I turned on the news and our whole back lot set, um, the front of, um, same as it never was antique store and, um, Jim's fire station and like all of that stuff. Anyway, it was, um, it was all on fire. And so I actually called the producers at the time and I was like, guys, our set is burning down. <laughs> like our town is burning down. And I had a bunch of like, um, uh, like cases of water in my garage. And so my best friend and I, we were like, let's get in the car. And so we drove cases of water to the firefighters actually, who were on the back lot. And we got like as close as we could get. And I remember the guy in the fire department was like, you can't be here. And I'm like, that's my, that's my set. I was like, this is, this is where we film. This is where we tell our stories. And I, I just, I have to stand here. Like I can't, I can't go. And so they put me at a safe distance and I stood there and I watched um, the, a lot of the back lot burn. What was crazy about it was that our very first episode, which we had received the night before for the start of that season, the season that um, Jamie Kennedy was on, um, it was, I think it was his first episode, it was all about how the town caught on fire. Um, so it was another like weird ghost whisperer thing because we had just gotten that script and we were getting ready to like put it on fake fire. Um, like a week or so later, and then um, the real fire happened. So it was really crazy. So to answer your question, we moved to Warner Brothers um, for a short time while they were rebuilding our sets and rebuilding the back lot. And where we shot our little like town square in Ghost Whisper was where they did Back to the Future. Um, so our town hall was like where the clock tower was and all of that stuff. So there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of history there and it was, it was sad to see it. Um, sad to see it burn that way. Um, was there any episode that stood out to me the most and stuck with me? Um, probably the episodes, there was a whole little block of episodes where Jim died. Um, and he had to come back as another person. He came back in another person's body and Melinda had to convince that guy to, I think his name was Sam, we called him, um, had to convince him that he was in love with her and, and all of that stuff. And I just remember um, those episodes for me, like for Melinda, were really painful because um, David and I were so used to playing, you know, Jim and Melinda's love, which was so great. I, I still believe Jim and Melinda were like one of the greatest couples on TV ever. And, and we were so proud to like play a positive marriage. 
um, not one that was like breaking apart where people were mean to each other or not. They just really loved each other and accepted each other for everything that they were. And it was just, it was beautiful to be a part of and it was beautiful to see. Um, Anyway, so I remember that block of episodes being really significant for me because I didn't know how to, how to not be Jim and Melinda and like this new, this new person, but it was David. And then there was the other actor that like stood in for him sometimes. It was all just like very strange. And I directed a couple of those episodes and, um, I just remember them being really hard, but probably the most significant episode was, was Jim dying and then his funeral, um, I don't know, my heart broke like in real life. <laughs> it was just so weird. Um, it was very strange. It was so strange for David too. Um, yes, Melinda and Jim are relationship goals. Um, you guys are so sweet. Thank you for joining me for this. I felt like this was a fun thing to do to celebrate and just to sort of have our little our little ghost whisperer love fest. Um, could, it, could you see, please say, hey, you're my favorite actress. Hi, hello. Hi, Gabs. Gabes. Gabes or Gabs? Gabes. I'm going to say Gabes and Gabs. I'm going to say, hey, Gabes and hey, Gabs. And that way we're covered. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, more episodes. You know, I have always dreamed of like someplace like Netflix or something doing like a little Ghost Whisperer movie to kind of tie up everything um, or going back to do like 10 final episodes, maybe. Um, where we could kind of like, you know, tell really great, um, 10 great stories and kind of revive that. I think that that would be really, really fun. Um, did I keep any of Melinda's clothes? Okay. So the funny part about Melinda's clothes, um, hi, Karen, I don't know who my favorite ghost is. Um, but the funny thing about Melinda's clothes, yes, I got to keep a lot of Melinda's clothes. Um, but I don't have them because my best friend, Jenny, who you guys know, um, stole all of Melinda's clothes. <laughs> So she wears them now and she has them and <laughs> they're in her closet somewhere. I have a few like pieces, but I loved Melinda's clothes. Um, can you say hey to me? Yes. Hello. Hi. Oh, a lot of people are binging Ghost Whisperer right now. That's very sweet. Thank you. Hi, Lucy. Um, I always wanted a red Jeep because of Melinda. I know. I love that car. She always got in trouble when she got in her car though. Um, oh, lots of people are liking that we did this. I'm so happy. Um, I'm really glad that you guys like this. I like it too. Um, I, I usually celebrate these little things in, um, in private and just sort of feel like, you know, a little pat on the back. We did Ghost Whisper. Good for you. Um, but it felt fun to, uh, celebrate with fans and with the end with you guys who, who really loved it and, and kept it going because without you, um, we wouldn't have been able to tell all those stories. Um, oh, somebody lost their cat. I'm sorry. Maybe your cat has a little kitty, Melinda Gordon, crossing them over. Um, so many hearts and more connection. The ghosts, the ghosts again. Um, oh my God. Somebody said that I have not aged. You are very sweet. And there's about 500,000 other people that disagree with you because people are always telling me all the time, oh, you look so different. I'm like, yeah, it's called, I'm not 20. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> somebody is watching this while they're in Spanish class. You better concentrate. I don't want to get you in trouble. Um, oh, hello, Rosalie. Hi, Rosalie. Um, yes, I will save this live, I promise. People are asking me to save it. I think people are busy. This is sort of a weird time to be doing this. I apologize. Um, anyway, guys, look, I'm gonna go. I have to. Uh, I have to go do some do some things. I'm gonna go try to do some yoga and um, feel very grateful um, for all of you and your love over the years for going with me on these crazy adventures with these with these really special people that I get to play. Um, and, uh, thank you for loving Melinda Gordon as much as I do. Um, thank you for making Ghost Whisperer, uh, a special show for people. Thank you for watching it over and over again and binging it now. Um, I, for all the people who have lost people in this incredible year that we've been in, um, I love you guys. And I do believe that there are Melinda Gordons out there that help people find a, a beautiful, safe place um, 
uh, to find their way to heaven um, or wherever they're going. And um, so I'm sending you guys lots and lots of love. Um, and to those of you who have not lost, um, may you not for as long as possible. Um, I'm sending you guys lots and lots of love, uh, peace, love, and happiness to you too. Thank you guys for always being so kind to me. Um, have the best day. And anybody that can grab a little glass of champagne or wine or just tea, whatever you want, do a little cheers today to, uh, to Melinda Gordon and Ghost Whisperer and 15 years and, um, and to all of you for making that possible. All right? Mwah! My heart is full. I love you guys so much. Um, have a great, great day. Go out and do something special and hug the people that you love. Okay? Mwah.